Um, I think our next speaker is Anton Pozhesnivko from CSCS ETHC. Anton, if you're ready, please go ahead and share your screen. Uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, let's see if I, I'm not sure because I'm a co-host. Uh, yes. Are you able to present now? You should be yes. seeing now the slide. Yes, I can see yes. it. Great, thank you. Good morning to all of you. So my name is Anton Kojevnikov. I work at CSCS and I will give now a short overview of, of some of the electronic structure libraries that we develop or libraries for the electronic structure community so, to, to be more precise. Uh, so what is CSCS? CSCS is a Swiss national supercomputing center. So we allocated in two parts. So the main facility and main office building is located in Lugano. So this is a southern and warm part of, of Switzerland. And but we since like a few years, we also have a small like uh, office in in a northern part. So in a main campus of ETH Zurich. So where I sit together with other software developers. And uh, to for you to know, so since 2013, so we operate a, a large uh, GPU facility. So in 2013, it was Craig C30 equipped with K20 GPU cards. And in 2016, we made an upgrade to P100 cards. And I think in 2017, we reached number three in top 500. So it's a pretty large facility. So now we are like on a place number 20, I think. Uh, but so we are working like on a, on a continuation. So we are going to, in the next few years, we are going to, to deploy a large, uh, also cray based Shasta facility. So uh, in, which means that in the, for, for like 10 or like no, seven or eight years already, our users have to, uh, to run on GPUs and this will continue for the next at least six to seven years. Uh, and also, uh, if you know, so Lumi machine, so there's a big facility that is built in Finland, is going to be operational in next, I think, year. And uh, we are part of this consortium. So we are Switzerland, uh, ETH Zurich is, is participant. So we think we own like 10% of this, of this share. And it's a, it's a huge facility. So like 50 petaflops, so we, we own. And so the plan is to move to offer some of our users the possibility to run there. And this facility is based on AMD cards. So it also means that in the next six, maybe five, six years, we will have to deal with AMD and uh, NVIDIA GPU cards for our codes. And of course, we all know so that for users, that's a horror to to port their codes to gpus they are struggling with like a lot of things you have to do a lot of things we all know this so you have to clean refactor understand so what it's doing find the computer intensive parts and then move to gpus and if you're in a fortran user so you have choices you have open acc you have open mp you can do cuda there is a cuda fortran but so what you do with cuda fortran on on imd cards so it's it's a bit of a painful process and we try to help as much as we can so we cannot as as a small cs so we are small so we're like 80 people maybe well, 120 people in total but people who are working on software part is maybe 30 so and we are small to influence the big community codes we cannot but so what we can do so we can work on some on some libraries, so much more well isolated pieces of, of codes that are uh, that can be shared between codes and so which are reusable. And that's what we try to do. And so here is the main part of the talk. So I try to give some overview of, of the things that we have developed for electronic structure codes. And maybe you will find this useful. Maybe you will say, okay, so I will not go into redesign it so I, I can take a ready solution. And I will start. I will start with, uh, okay, usual suspects, uh, linear algebra matrix multiplication. So this is a long, so long problem, so well known. So you have distributed scalar pack matrices. So you want to multiply them as fast as possible. 
And Cosmo is this library. So it's both an algorithm and a library that performs uh, communication optimal matrix multiplication. So this work was, uh, uh, I think it was the best paper award in SC19. And it's, it's, it's written in, in, so it's the theoretical part was developed in a group of Thorsten Hofler and uh, our, our guy, so Marco Kabich, he was uh, working on the HPC part of this, of this library. So what it mathematically proves, so the work is, so it's a mathematical proof that, so you cannot outperform this implementation in terms of communication optimality. So this is on an optimal part. And so this uh, library has, well, it's, it's, has like, so it's ready. So it's used in production in CP2K. So it's written with MPI OpenMP for CPU. It has backends for AMD and CUDA GPUs. And it has the native replacement for PDGEM, PZGEM uh, functions of Scala pack. So we did this exercise with CP2K where CP2K wasn't changed at all because CP2K was calling Scala pack functions, but we uh, capture this calls and replace it with Cosmo. So Cosmo has a wrapper and it works quite well. So it's, we outperform, I think, by a factor yeah, three, the best implementation that was available. And what is the use case for this kind of library? So the use case is any problem which you have, which involves the matrix matrix multiplication in Scala pack form is, is the good candidate for Cosmo library. So please have a look at it. Uh, second one in the list is Costa. Costa is the communication optimal shuffle and transpose algorithm. So again, so it's a fruitful collaboration between a group of Thorsten Hofler and us doing HPC implementation. So Costa was initially a part of Cosmo library. So, but it was then isolated in the standalone library. And so what it does, it does a, a shuffle and transpose operations, the solely shuffle and transpose. So if you have any problem that, so you want to redistribute data for your, like if you need a different data distribution, so this library is for you. So it will perform much, much faster than any implementation that's available in Cray, Lipsci or MKL. And again, it has a drop-in replacements for a couple of uh, Scala pack functions. So you can give it a try. Uh, why it was used or why it was developed? So it was developed because Cosma, Cosma has to do the data reshuffling. So Cosma starts with a Scala pack for what we give it, but Cosma needs to reshuffle data internally for its own data distribution. That's why Costa had to be born and, and developed. Uh, I'll go forward uh, and give an overview of third library. Third library is SPLA. SPLA stands for Specialized linear algebra so this is one of the operations we discovered in in plane wave codes when you do for example davidson iterative solver so when you operate in wave functions so what you have to do often is you have to multiply wave functions to, to do the inner product between blocks of wave functions and these wave functions initially are distributed in slabs so each mpi rank has the fraction of playway and coefficients and the whole index of, of a band and then this uh, wave functions are so that so total and skinny matrix is distributed uh, between the MPI ranks. But you, when you make a in the product, you have to obtain a matrix which is in a 2D block cyclic distribution because later on you're going to do a scala pack on it. That's a special case which is not available anywhere. So we had to, to work on it. And the second case here is when you have matrix of eigenvectors which came from a scala pack. Uh, diagonalization. So it's in a, in a small matrix in a 2D block cyclic distribution. And then you have to use it to, to transform your wave functions into a linear combination of wave functions. So that's the second uh, example. And we developed a special, special library for solely for these operations. Again, so it, it has GPU backends for CUDA and ROCAM. And you, you can ask, so why? We cannot use Cosmo for that. So we could and so we can, but uh, it turns out that Cosmo so has some also have some limitations in terms of uh, for any MNK index or for any MNK triplet that you encounter, Cosmo will have to build the communication layer. 
And if you do iterative uh, decanization, so you add different sizes of the matrices, and basically it means that you will have to build a lot of communicators for your uh, matrix multiplication. This is first, and second, your Cosmo needs to move data because it will it can start with this layout, but it will move data for a communication optimal layout. So it's a second overhead. So in a, in a limit of, of a very big matrix, Cosmo will outperform this one. But for a typical use cases, so the SPLA performs better because it does not move uh, A and B matrices. It does not touch the, yeah, the wave function matrices. And it can also start with GPU pointers. So uh, with actually with any combination of in and out pointers, you can have a GPU memory. Uh, so you can move your wave functions to GPUs and perform a multiplication with a CPU pointer. So it will do it. And that's the that's the benchmark for SPLA. And so we are looking into, yeah, so in the CPU and GPU, so GPU part is more interesting. So if you see, and that's a performance per node, and 4.5 teraflop is the peak performance of P100 card. And so up to 484 nodes, uh, SPLA performs very well. And so this jump here, I think, is the change of communication algorithm for, for create MPICH. So it just does different communication pattern. And it's much, much so better than uh, like uh, the leap size out of the question here. And Cosmo struggles to compete if, because Cosmo will move data to GPU, so there's overhead. But if you start with CPU pointers, Cosmo is on par, but still SPLA outperforms it because it doesn't do this extra data reshuffling. Uh, and again, so here the use case is when I don't know you have a Green's function, and so you want to like sum over uh, electron hole pairs as a sort of huge index, and you you want to get a scalar pack matrix. This is that's the that's the use case for us. Uh, another another kernel that we discovered so while analyzing quantum express and similar plane wave uh, codes is FFT. So FFT is is a well known well beaten to this problem but it to our surprise we could not find a, a, a library that will actually support the spherical spherical cutoffs uh, because that's what we have so we start from a sphere and plane waves and so we decompose the sphere and sticks of g vectors of different sizes and then we have to transform and there was no library to do it and again so we designed the library that I think is 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 very good. So it it works with standard uh, stick decomposition that you can find in quantum espresso, for example. And I guess Wasp should be doing the same. Again, it has uh, GPU backends for AMD and CUDA. It works out of the box. It uh, encapsulates all the memory management. So as a host code, you might not even know about the device on which you run. So it, the memory management will be hidden from you. Uh, it can start with CPU, GPU pointers. Uh, it has only one D2D decomposition. And so the reason for it is that, uh, so the use cases, you, you want to apply Hamiltonian a lot of times to a lot of wave functions. And there is no, there is no way you can do it fast with like 1D, 1D, 1D decomposition. So why you have to do MPI exchange twice. So this is in 1D to the decomposition, so you do it once. And that's the actually the bottleneck for distributed FFTs. And besides, it's this layout is good for GPUs where you arrive to, to this slab, which you can then batch transform on a GPU device. So that's the only limitation. But we have a gamma point case, so we can do complex to real transforms. And we tried it in Quantum Espresso, I think. Yeah, so we tried it as, as so we injected it into a mini app benchmark of Quantum Espresso. And it performs well on, uh, for example, here on yeah, on uh, different regimes where we do uh, like MPI benchmarks or uh, like benchmarks between different uh, implementation or different architectures. And you see, so we have here runs on Radeon on P hundred V hundred, and. Yeah, so if you have an FFT, if you're thinking so, oh, I need an FFT, so we have it implemented. Uh, next one is then in the list is a serious library. 
Sirius is like uh, more than just a linear algebra library. So it's basically a, a mini app implementation of a density functional code for plane waves and full potential LPW. So because those classes of codes have a lot of similar features. So we, we took a like a challenge. So we implemented these methods in a standalone library again with ROCAM or with GPU, AMD and CUDA backends. Sirius implements basic quantum espresso functionality for non-conserving uh, ultra soft and PAW uh, pseudo potentials. It implements exciting or ELK type of uh, full potential LPW method with arbitrary combination of local orbitals. So we can do stress as force. Uh, so it's interfaced with quantum espresso and actively used in the group of Nicola Marzari for, for production runs. So the standard things like lattice relaxation, variable cell relaxation, we can do. Uh, the fresh slide, so which I just, I think, did a couple of weeks ago, it's a benchmark of small, like 64 atom unit cell, but it's not important. What is important, so we managed to run the code, the quantum espresso series code on MI100 card. So we got an access to MI100 card, it's only one. So we didn't have four of them. So that's why the bar with four nodes is missing here. But we are very, very close to, to P100 runs. Maybe some, I know, Magma library is not performing well, but we are close in performance, so it works. And so that's the, and the four nodes I, managed to run with QE series implementation and standard QE implementation with PGI. This is orange bar here. And the, also we have like similar performance. We are a little bit faster, but in some cases we are a little bit slower. And this, I could not run quantum step press standard on one node, so it runs out of memory. So that's why this figure is incomplete. But important things here is we can run simple workflows for lattice relaxation of quantum espresso on uh, AMD cards. So we are actually ready for Lumi machine, at least for some of the workflows, because quantum espresso is a huge code and with a lot of different ways how you can run it. NLCG is, is next in my list. Uh, NLCG implements the wave function optimization, robust wave function optimization method. And the story here is the following. So in, in the group of Nicola Marzari, so they run a uh, high throughput calculation, like thousands of them. And so what they discovered that maybe 10, 15% uh, of quantum espresso runs would never converge. And of course, these are like magnetic lanthanides. Uh, they just simply don't converge. Uh, you can change mixing parameters, number of history steps, cutoffs, you cannot reach convergence. And that was the, and if like 10% 10, 10 of, of 20,000 is 2,000 simulations that you cannot finish. And that was, that was uh, an issue for Nicola Marzari and for his group. And so we took this as an opportunity to, to improve the serious library and LCGs uh, add on to it. So it's a standalone library that implements the robust minimization of the wave functions. It's one of the libraries in our uh, deck of, of uh, deck of libraries that is written with Cocos, not with uh, Rockham or with Kuda with Cocos. But it provides almost 100%. So here, 100% success is out of this 15%, which are not convergent. So if you have non conservant pseudos, all of them will converge because at every step you will you're guaranteed to have smaller energy. So it goes to, to energy minimum at every step. And for ultra soft or PW pseudo potentials, we have 90% success rate. And yeah, quantum espresso has 0% success rate here. So it's also a huge improvement. And we're now trying to understand what's going on with PW or ultra soft pseudo potentials. Unfortunately, so there is a lot of them, so we don't know if our method is not working properly or there is something with pseudo potentials themselves. Uh, yeah, so yeah, let's move forward. DBCSR, so it's next in my list. DBCSR is the sparse uh, distributed block cyclic sparse row 
uh, matrix multiplication. So that's uh, that's a workhorse for CP2K code in linear scaling mode. So when you have to instead of diagonalization, which takes you order n cube operations, you change it for matrix multiplications, and you you, you use the sparsity of the matrix because you have Gaussians, you have like blocks of atoms or blocks of in your matrix, you can utilize sparsity. And this is, it has a long history. It was part of CP2K. Uh, it is it's one of the libraries that is written in Fortran. It has a CUDA backend. It has now ROCAM backend. So this is what we did. Uh, so we also did uh, a lot of work to uh, create uh, or to compile, just in time compile the optimal GPU kernels for any architecture. So it won't now run. Uh, so before it was running like exhaustively all the combinations of, of kernels to get the optimal parameters. Now they are derived on the fly. So first time it encounters the matrix multiplication small and the small blocks like 23 by 27 times 17, the strange sizes. But first time it encounters this matrix multiplication block, it will run or it will derive some parameters, compile the kernel, it will store it, and then for the entire run, it will use this cached kernel to perform the best small matrix multiplication. And what's important here, uh, DBCSR does not store the full copy of the matrix because it's, it's very tempting. So because it's a sparse matrix, you compress it. So it's a compact in memory. And it's very tempting to store it whole in each of the nodes. And then your matrix times the vector operation is very easy because you don't have to do MPI, but it will hit you later. So the DBCSR does not store the global matrix, so it distributes it between the nodes, and it is a lot of machinery to do MPI exchange. This is all uh, optimized, and uh, we are actually looking further with vendors how to optimize it further. And use cases here is any code or any problems that involves sparse block matrix multiplication will benefit from this. Uh, from this library. For CP2K, it's a de facto, it's a standard one, and CS, I think, is also unit. Uh, yeah, I think that's the small uh, figure showing the performance for, for uh, like the small kernel size, for small matrix multiplication for between CPUs and GPUs. So, and there's more written in the, in the papers about DBCSR. DLA future is, is our uh, next one in the list. So yeah, it's a prototype library. So we're still working on it. So it's a library uh, for with the goal, ultimate goal to have an eigen generalized eigen value solver distributed one with GPU backend written in HPX. HPX is the advanced C++ runtime for, for multi-threaded applications. So it's a high tech for in terms of, of how you code it but so the good thing so it if your code is written hpx you can exploit the the how to say the non the non asynchronous t of of your matrix operations and so that's that's the that's the benchmark that we we did so it's a very interesting one so first plot here of first chart is the four consecutive Cholesky uh, factorizations that are done one by one. And if you have task-based runtime, and if you have such kind of, of, of operations that you can actually overlap, you can create these uh, four tasks and it will create you like direct acyclic graphs for your problem and it will try to overlap as much as possible. So here you see that the Svocholeskis are fused into one big execution. They are done independently, and it's much more uh, in, in favor of, of resource utilization. So it tries to pack all these small operations while the communication is doing so well. Some blocks are doing communications, others are doing computations. So it's not a finished product, but so we are close to maybe so it will need one more year and we will have an eigenvalue solver and actually so for LAPW for Sirius this is like so we are waiting for this to, to benchmark it 
as the first users. I need it very much myself. Uh, just as a final thing summary uh, for the common traits that we actually have at CSCS and for software development, we use C++ as a programming language for all our libraries. And I didn't talk about other domains like neuroscience or uh, weather and climate. So C++ is our base language for programming with and if for high level for high level languages we do python that's also our like a trade for many projects we use CUDA rockm exclusively and cocos a little bit so we have zero code so started uh, with started with uh, open SEC or open mp so it's, and while so we had CUDA and with CUDA it was actually very very easy to move to Rockham. so we were very happy with CUDA and Rockham porting so we use CMake I think none of our projects is using auto tools so we all CMake users it's like least evil that we can get and we are fans of SPAC so we use SPAC to build dependency and all our packages are in SPAC so we can type on SPAC install SPLA and it will work. And that's, I think that's the end of my presentation. I hope you, you can find some useful libraries that you can, you can use. Yeah. Thank you very much.